this lady in, in Oklahoma um, had a miscarriage. And she had a miscarriage. Uh, and let me see if it gives a city. Uh, I don't see a city, but nevertheless, had a miscarriage. 21 year old Oklahoma woman. She was convicted of first degree manslaughter. Okay. We're having a miscarriage. And the prosecutor blamed her for the miscarriage because of her use of methamphetamines. Now, this is the uh, Brittany Pula, who she's a um, member of the Com Comanche Nation, and she's been sentenced to four years in a state prison for manslaughter of the miscarriage of this baby. The autopsy, autopsy of the fetus showed that it had tested positive for methamphetamines. Now, <clears throat> how far the, does the reach go That's what I'm saying. for <laughs> this type of thing? So, uh, abortion is legal in some places, okay? Um, I'm going to fight for my freedom. It, it, it's legal in some places. Now, I, I don't agree with it, but it is legal in some places. In our own state, there's a fight about, uh, again, uh, you know, w with the whole abortion being, you know, legal or. It's a, a, it's a touchy or subject. But here it is you have a woman who, hey, through her own admission, I guess, she did some meth while she was pregnant and the kid died. And she's in jail for the next four years. Now, I don't know what Britney's record is, but I would assume that it can't be squeaky clean. Um, if they're giving her four years for having a miscarriage, um, I don't know. What, what, it doesn't seem right to me. I'm not saying, you know, I, I don't know. They, are, I, they were so ready to throw this lady in jail, too. Like, I, I, I just don't understand... How far does the reach go into this? Is kind of like a pre crime. That baby could have died of anything. That's yeah. That's that's what I was gonna say. Like, if you have a normal miscarriage, are you a murderer now? Exactly. If you didn't drink enough water. You this is the setting the precedent <laughs> because it, it, let's say you have too much Hennessy or uh, I don't know margaritas. Yeah. And you slip down the stairs, and you know the baby dies. Are you at risk of being prosecuted for manslaughter? Especially in like places like Texas, where <clears throat> obviously now you can't do it, but you only had six weeks to find out if you were pregnant. Right. Uh, most women don't even know within six weeks. So that first six weeks, you could just be at the bar chilling, drinking a margarita. Hey, you just turned into a murderer, and you're going to get four years in prison, by the way, for drinking that margarita. Hope it was good. Yeah, it's uh this this is this is setting the precedent of, of so much for freedom in the U.S. Man, I'm it, telling it, you, people think they're so free here, and they're not. Well, we're freer than most countries, but this true. this most. case this case here I is uh, agree with that, but there you go. they're they're basing this on her being engaged in the commission of a of a misdemeanor. Do you think it made a a difference because she was a Native American? Yep. Hey man, uh, from the Comanche Nation. Who, who knows? It could. I didn't see a picture of her, but um, she's part of the Comanche tribe, and yeah. um, they're in OKC. It's because she's Native American. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But who 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 knows, man? It, it's it just seems a bit much. It says the fetus was between fifteen and seventeen weeks old, according to the Emmy's report. Um. So, which means it wasn't viable outside the womb yet anyways, but still doesn't give you the right to kill it, if you're going to kill it, in my opinion. But the fact that it did, anything could have caused this fetus to die. And you, you kind of look at it and say, okay, does she deserve four years in state prison, though? This is already I think the whole thing's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think it's, and I don't think it's a. a I just think thing it's... about if she deserves the time. I think we all know that uh, the way the U.S. system works is they want to put you in prison because they make money off of you being. Oh in yeah, prison. it's a private, private more, source now. Private yeah, entity. There's, yeah. there's, it's private business. There's more people in, <clears throat> in prison in America. You know, as a percentage than any other country. So it's interesting that you say that, guys. 
this is completely off topic, but I heard an interview this morning and it talked about the music industry back in the 90s, 1991 to be specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a meeting that took place with a bunch of you know studio heads and then um, some um, artists that came in to this meeting. It was an invite only kind of meeting. Everyone that got there had to sign a confidentiality agreement gag order, whatever, um, that kind of deal. Make sure you can't say anything when they came to this meeting. So some people signed it, some people left or whatever and went on out of there. <clears throat> These were hip hop artists at the time. So from what this, this guy says is during that meeting, they talked about business and how the prisons were um, at the time they hadn't been privatized or they were looking to privatize prisons, making them a business. People were owning and investing in them, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And back in the 90s, there was maybe 500 prisons. What they instructed these people, what they wanted them to do is they said, we're trying to look at increasing the revenue and this business. So we want you to inter- interject in the music. Talk about the oh, yeah. lifestyles of, you know, gang banging and stealing and robbing and make glamorize that yep. so that they could increase the population and build on this business. And here we are in 2021 and there's over 17, 1800 prisons right now. Um, and the guy was kind of it was kind of his confession because he's not in the industry anymore. Um, but he just said, man, I'm just putting it all on the line because right now I'm, you know, I have nothing to lose. So he talked about that meeting that they had in 1991. And if you look back through hip hop, where the turn took place on when you had your like your Queen Latifahs and your heavy D's and your the positive rap kind of people to where it made a turn to get turning the gangster rap. And you had folks come out there and. Boom, that's what it was. Now, I can't say that all the guys that were involved that came after 91 were complicit, um, knowingly complicit, but that's where the industry went if you look back at what music was. And, man, it worked. It absolutely worked. Because there's prisons, man, and they are privatized. um, And it's ridiculous at at how many we we have. I wonder how them, them prison companies, I wonder how much they throw to politicians. Who, who knows? Jack we, we, we'll sent, never know. Jack, see the link I just sent you? Can you pull that up? <clears throat> we'll never know how much they sent throw to them. At all. Yeah, that's the... That's, I really think it's these lobbyists that lead to, you know, corruption within... Look at this. U.S. will surpass China as the number one country for manufacturing in 2020. Go on, go down. I thought that was incarceration. Like a smoke. Oh, that's manufacturing. Okay. Yeah. But anywho, that it was interesting that you said that about the prisons, man, because that's that's uh whew. that that is that is And I think it's interesting when you when you break up the the person the percentage from a racial standpoint. This is interesting. Right. Um put you both on here. Top contributors for 2021 to 2022, Core Civic, uh, CEO group, or GEO group, sorry, and Management and Training Core. Uh, There's a very heavy leaning side here. Ooh, the Republicans. Yeah. Um, And I'll say, like, at least in my experience, it's the Republican states or Republican-controlled governments that are really, really good at disparaging the communities for example like in a georgia we saw earlier this year with the voting Mm -hmm. um just stuff like that like they really like to take advantage and and it's like of course it's going to be easier to pass laws in those states because the the marginalized people are poor as hell so they can't do anything um all the people making the laws in these country or in these states are old rich white people or not even white people but old rich people um who can just lobby money around, and it doesn't it doesn't affect them, and they get to make money from it. So it, I'm I'm not surprised. This is not a surprise to me. Oh no, uh, not at all, at all. But uh, for profit prisons, yes, looks like 
we got almost $3 million um, in contributions. And you see, to me, it's part, that's the, what leads to a lot of the corruption that you've got in the U.S. It's the, it's the PACs and the, the corporations throwing money to the politicians. I mean, common sense tells you it's not going to do. Of course, and, and like it's I not, said. It's not going to achieve anything as such. Georgia, right there at the top. And Ke Kelly Leffler is like the most disgusting human I've ever seen in my life. And I, it just surprises me that people in Georgia would even vote for somebody. Uh, I, I think she had two terms, if not even one term. Someone who is openly insider trading on her position. Really? Through, yes. Oh, oh, yeah, dude. You got to read about it. Her husband is like the um, something, and it's, it's like the regulator in the stock market, like super up there. So, so it's funny. So they write the Constitution to limit the terms on the presidency. But these jokers can stay in office for ever, and they have more power. I think they than, do have than, more power than the president. They do because the president can write executive orders, but I mean, you can only go so far with it. Yeah. But with these guys, man, they're, they're there forever. Oh well, we're not trying to make this political, but you know, sometimes it gets political <laughs> on the table, baby. Yeah. You got to get ready for you never know what we what we say. The so, war on drugs. Yeah. yeah, there is no war the, on drugs. The famous war on drugs. Yeah. The American prison population has skyrocketed. Okay, so in the 70s when he declared the war on drugs, right? Where's the graph at? This year? This is y-axis. doesn't say... I would guess it would be the year span, though. Yeah, it doesn't go back long enough. Yeah. It's a terrible increase. We do know that. Yeah, we know it looks like the Bitcoin chart. But. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely looks like a Bitcoin yeah. chart. Yeah. So. Oh, well. But that that's a... Uh, we know it happens. And it's, you know, it's unfortunate, but... <sighs> I think it, I, I think that'll be fixed, though, in the next five or ten years. I personally do. Now, that might just be being optimistic. What, but I with passing laws? Uh, I, I don't know if it, it gets fixed, but I think we'll start to chew away at the, the problem. Especially now that we're out of uh, the Middle East and all that. It's a, yeah. There's a lot of money that needs to uh, go places. So, but what, what well, I, I will say this. Um, President Trump, as much as, you know, many don't like him, with that first step that when with, you know, decriminalizing you know, marijuana and some of the charges, some of these guys are actually locked up. Um, um, I had a family member myself that was, you know, some of that information he was able to, to benefit from, from some of that. So, um, hopefully they can, they can, uh, get some of the people up out of there. But of course, when you're locking up people for manslaughter, for having a miscarriage, <laughs> shoot, you never know what, what well, there's something wrong with that reasoning, isn't there? Yeah, that, absolutely. That's really what it boils down to. Absolutely.